What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and I'm coming back with some exciting Battleitics action. Uh, more Wave 2 designs voted on uh, by your patrons of Death From Above Wargaming. So thanks to our patrons. Um, this one is, uh, it's an icon. One of Tom's favorites, the Flashman. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the, the Flashman 8K this is a Star League design. Um, it, uh, it is all energy weapons, so always useful. Uh, I was highly coveted. And of course, after the dissolution and, and breakdown of the Star League, this mech uh, found its way into just about every house. Uh, and then of course had a downgraded version and was re-upgraded uh, and lives on forever. Uh, this thing was originally debuted in 2701. Uh, so it has quite a storied history to it. Very excited to take a look at this one. Um, everybody loves energy boats, right? The Black Knight, the Flashman. Um, these two, I think, both in that 75-ton weight class. Um, and I believe we did the Black Knight already. Um, and if we haven't, maybe I should. But I'm very curious to see how this one stacks up. So it clocks in at 1779 battle value. It doesn't have any fancy weapons on it. Uh, just all standard beam weaponry and a flamer. Um, but it does have an XL engine and some other goodies in there. So we're going to take a look at it, see how the Flashman stacks up. So guys, stick around. Battleitics action coming right up. All right, guys, here we are. Flashman FLS 8K. This baby's 75 tons. Uh, it's a, just a sweet spot, in my opinion. 1779 battle value. Um, so, as we talked about, produced in 2701, and this does see service in some form or another all the way uh, into the Ill Clan era. So, pretty exciting stuff. Um, it moves. For a 75 ton mech, it moves as a 5'8. Does not jump, but it is, you know, akin to a Timberwolf, a Summoner, right, a Vulture. So it does have that that clan speed for a heavy. Um, it has 15 double heat sinks, has an XL engine. Ooh, don't love it. Um, but everything else is standard. Standard gyro, standard structure, standard armor. Um, it does pack 13 and a half tons of armor. I mean, this thing, 216 pips in classic, 93.5 percent armor coverage that's that's pretty substantial um, if you look over at the center armor diagram there it is well armored everywhere um, the center torso probably a little bit below spec um, I, I might consider peeling a little bit off the arms maybe a little bit off the legs to beef that ct up a bit but um, you know that that's that's by volume, so it, it probably looks a little worse than it is. And we can take a look at survivability a little bit closely. Um, no hand actuators on this one. And then in terms of weaponry, I mean, it has has stuff everywhere. Um, each arm has a large and medium laser duo. Um, the CT has a third large laser in there. Um, the left torso also mounts a rear medium laser. Um, both side torsos have a medium laser. Uh, flamer in the head, so <laughs> there's there's stuff everywhere. It does have an AMS as well, anti-missile system in the right torso, so it does have some good stuff there. You know, the AMS is important, I think, in this Mac. We'll talk about it, but I think it's important in this Mac because this thing really has a range problem. Um, would have loved to have seen an ER large laser um, or even just a single PPC um, in lieu of, like, the flamer and the rear-mounted medium laser. Maybe an upgrade I would do. Um, of course, then it would probably look identical to a Black Knight from an armament perspective. But, you know, that 15 hex, 15 inch maximum range is, uh, it's tough. It's tough to work with um, in Classic. All right, so let's look at the offensive benchmarks. Let's see how this thing does. Okay, the offensive benchmarks on this thing admittedly do not blow my socks off. Um, you know, because it has access to, you know, that... That Star League era technology, it, you know, it could have ER PPCs, it could have ER large lasers, um, but it doesn't, and the damage really suffers. You can see the back half of the damage, right, and everything, pretty much up until it's within like nine inches, is very lackluster. Um, it's very prone to building up heat. 
um, you know, if you're alpha striking after those medium lasers come into play. Otherwise, you can shoot everything and be just fine. But yeah, I mean, optimized, you're at 184.7 damage. Um, so another 75 tonner that comes to mind is a Marauder. Um, and this is a 3050 error refit. But again, you know, that's the same tech level. Um, it is the, um, the 5S. That's the one with the Gauss rifle, the two ER PPCs. That thing does something like 240 optimized damage. That is a substantial difference. Um, so in terms of what the Flashman could put out, I think the tonnage is there in terms of the weapons. Um, but I'm never, as you guys know, I'm, I'm really not a fan of large lasers and classic. I think they're, they're extremely lackluster. Um, however, lethality, it didn't do too bad. It was able to take down that javelin 97.7% of the time. Um, you know, time to kill was 10.39, which is, you know, it's, it's about, so it's, it's, it's a little bit on the worst side of average. It's not terrible. Um, does tend to generate a little bit more than average critical hits. I think on average we see about three critical hits. So 411 is um, above that. And that's because it just has so many weapons. Um, and then the damage per hit at six, which makes sense. You've got three doing eight. You've got a whole bunch doing five. Um, so yeah, offensively, the Flashman, it did, doesn't, doesn't blow me away. Um, no pun intended. I think, you know, the Flashman is probably a fluff mech um, in the sense that, you know, uh, operating behind enemy lines, all energy weapons, things like that. Um, but, you know, again, I think from a design perspective, it could have just as easily fit you know, a couple of ER PPCs instead of three large, and you might see more damage coming on sooner, contributing to a higher ACD. Um, but let's see how the survivability looks on the defensive side. All right, so on the defensive side, um, you know, again, armor's looking good. It's above average on the arms, a little under on the legs, above on the, uh, the it's actually grossly over armored on the rear. This is one of the things that I noticed um, you know, well above expected and well above, you know, what I would consider to be your maximum allotment. Um, it has a total of 36 pips across all three sections. Um, and when you think about the CT only having 25, you know, I would definitely peel some off the rear, maybe take a little bit off those arms, um, and put it on the center torso. But survivability overall isn't bad. I mean, 89.5%, that's really good. Um, you know, barely takes any motive hits. Um, it, um, you know, again, it, it, overall, 93.5% armor coverage is a ton. There really isn't a lot to be said here, except for it's got an XL engine, and that's contributing to, you know, over 60% of the deaths. Um, so, you know, when you're looking at, at that and, and, you know, the weaponry, I, I just don't think, again, I don't hate the Flashman. I love the Flashman. Um, but I think that if you're going to spend, you know, um, risk on including an XL engine, uh, that, that tonnage that you freed up needs to be used in a way that makes the mech kill a lot faster than the Flashman does. Um, still 90%, you know, 89.5% respectable number for survivability. Um, but, you know, the other thing I guess I should call out is it, it's not that expensive, right? Was it 17 something um, battle value? Um, so, you know, maybe, let me see here, what was it? 1779. So, so maybe on the efficiency side, it'll all flesh out. Um, but let's take a look, um, next here at the efficiency and, and see, see what we've got. Okay. So efficiency, I feel like I've been rambling because I, I'm honestly caught a little bit off guard. I was expecting much better numbers, um, from the Flashman. Again, you you just see all these, these beam weapons and, and I don't know, I get so excited, but uh, here we are. So not a lot of damage loss, which is good. And again, that's because it's got very high survivability. So only 4.88% damage loss. Our average is about 10. Um, so this is well under that average. The efficiency rating comes out at 7.06. That's good. And again, you know, after I talked about the defensive side, I brought up the battle value. I think that's the selling point of this thing. It's really not that expensive. Um, you know, when I looked up that Marauder here, um, I'm on battlelytics.com now, and that Marauder 5S, you know, is similar uh, in terms of battle value. In fact, it's identical 
uh, almost by 2020. Seven, it's 1799. This is 1779. So the 20 battle value difference. I would take that Marauder every day of the week over the Flashman. Um, but the efficiency rating on the Marauder is much better, 9.54. Again, this speaks to battle value. I don't really know how a mech with two ER PPCs and a Gauss rifle is, you know, priced similarly. You know, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the armor on this thing. Um, it's got it's got less armor than the Flashman, and I know this isn't a Comparo, but you know, when you talk about mechs in class, this thing is is definitely outclassed by some mechs, but it outclasses the large majority of things. You know, 7.06 is is pretty good, right? It's on the right side of that bell curve. Um, gunnery sensitivity. So it's a little bit low. Um, we don't really see a ton of gain. Um, it's not abysmally low, but uh, you know, it, it, we don't see a ton of gain from um, you know from improvements in gunnery. We see a little bit. So uh, if you look at the effective damage by gunnery, uh, that step chart, I actually changed this visual from the last ones. I don't know why this never dawned on me before, but I aligned it with the one above so that, you know, you can see it gunnery four, five point four, five uh, efficiency does 96.99 damage and all the way up to gunnery zero doing 248.54. And that's a 7.98 um, efficiency score. But again, that's gonna cost you a fortune and you can get better mechs for less points. Um, honestly, to me, and we'll talk a little bit about this in the role analysis, this is a mech you do not put a good gunner in. This is where, you know, if you have a gunnery four or gunnery three, um, or I mean, some of you play with worse, right? This is the kind of mech um, I would stick those guys in because it's a point and shoot type of mech. You pretty much need to be close to use it anyway. You're not doing, you know, deep field shots through terrain and all this other stuff. Um, but let's talk about that. Why don't we flip over to um, to our role analysis. I'll tell you what I think for this particular mech. I said Brawler, I said Cavalry, and I said Vanguard. This is, you know, the flash bulb, as it is called. It's this giant bulbous, goofy looking thing, just bursting forth with beam weaponry. Put a cheap dude in it, slap it on the field, and just run it up the middle. Um, if people shoot it, it'll take some punishment. It'll have AMS to defray some incoming fire. Um, and it will do its job and earn some points back for that 1,700-ish, you know, maybe 2,000 with a half-decent pilot. Um, but, you know, ultimately get the thing in close, get those medium lasers in play. That's essential. Um, if I had the option to fire medium lasers versus a large, obviously the medium lasers are a much better bang for buck. In terms of heat, um, just in general, I, the medium lasers is a much better weapon. If you're going to mod it, you know, doing field refits or modifications, just get rid of the large lasers. You know, maybe put a couple ER large on there, you know, maybe upgrade one of them to a PPC or an ER PPC. Um, I know, again, it looks like a Black Knight, but, um, you know, do what you can do there. Um, but honestly, if, you know, if you're talking about the stock loadout on this thing, getting close is absolutely best. Um, so looking at the threat assessment, I mean, it's got obviously nothing beyond 15 inches or 15 hexes, um, and it really becomes threatening at about nine inches. What's interesting is, you know, your zero heat ACD, your maximum ACD are the same, again, while those large lasers are in play um, before the medium lasers come in. Um, because, you know, you can, you, you'll never saturate your heat sinks with, uh, with firing the three large. You'll be at 24 heat, you can dissipate 30, you can run and you're still fine. Um, your alpha strike potential is 24, right? Uh, they do eight a pop. So that's not bad, but the problem is you're, you're just not likely to hit with all of them unless you have a crack shot pilot. And again, it's only 24 damage. It's barely more than two PPCs, right? So... I don't know. Um, I'm a little bummed out about the Flash Man. I mean, it, it, it's got some bite. If you Alpha Strike um, and you're in close, right? Like, so before the Flamer comes into play, um, you know, you can you can still do a ton of damage, you know, six to six inches or so, six hexes or so. You know, you can still have, you know, a pretty substantial chunk of damage. Um, you know, again, you've got four 
four fire, four forward firing uh, medium lasers, three forward firing large lasers. So, you know, you're not doing too bad. Uh, 44 points if you hit with everything. But um, most of the time, you're going to average about 83.3% of that, and you're still going to build up, um, you know, a substantial amount of heat, um, six points, actually, uh, if you if you fire that, that loadout. Um, and you know, if I'm, if I'm thinking here, seven is where a gunnery penalty comes into play. So, you know, you can do that if you also run or whatever, I mean, you're basically in that gunnery penalty and that's only going to hurt you further down the road. So even alpha striking with this mech is a little bit difficult. I don't know. Interested what you guys think. Um, I know the Flashman is well loved. Maybe there are some better variants out there. Um, you know, this one doesn't blow me away. Uh, admittedly, I, I haven't played a Flashman ever in my life. Um, I have one um, that I am painting up uh, right now, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so I'm gonna have to think real long and hard about what variant uh, is out there. And I, I don't know that, at least at this point, the point that I'm filming this, that the, any of the Flashmen have appeared in, in any of the Ill Clan recognition guides. Um, so maybe maybe there'll be a treat somewhere in one of the later ones where we'll get a you know, sweet new Flashman with some, uh, some high tech gear on it. Um, but this one, you know, this is, uh, this is a rank and file type mech. I mean, this isn't anything that's going to blow your socks off. Um, it's not, uh, you know, a super optimized min max type mech. Um, but it'll hold its own, you know, again, a 7.09 um, or whatever it was, uh, 7.06. I'm looking right at it. <laughs> 7.06. Uh, it's not bad. Um, it's just not, you know, I, I guess I expected a lot more from this mech. Um, you definitely need to get it in close. The good news is it has the speed to do it. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, is it is it a is it a must have? I would say probably not. Um, but is it one that I would feel comfortable if I rolled it randomly on a table or if I decided to take it in a narrative campaign? I think so, absolutely. Um, all right, so I'm done with the Flash Man again. Leave a like, leave us a comment. I want to hear what you think about the Flashman, how you use it, what variants you like, so on and so forth. Very interested to hear about that. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Um, it's a little icon on the bottom of the screen. You just need to click it. It'll take you right to it. Um, if you've already subscribed and you want to help out the channel or get more involved, head on over to Patreon. Um, Patreon has three different tiers, $1, $5, $10. Um, you know, even a dollar a month helps out, um, and, and, you know, shouldn't hopefully put a dent in anybody's checkbook. Um, but you know, helps with the studio lights, helps us with, uh, you know, cool new, uh, banners and terrain and everything, uh, that we use in our productions, uh, here at DFA. Um, speaking of, of Patreon, we also have a new website, uh, that launched, um, so you can check that out. Um, and, uh, if you are a member on Patreon, you can also access, um, some additional content there as well. So pretty cool. Um, speaking of accessing cool stuff, check out Aries Games and Minis. Uh, Derek's got all the goods, the books, the dice, the game aids, the miniatures, of course. Um, so all the great stuff that uh, that you can uh, spend your money on is over there uh, at Aries Games and Minis. So definitely check that out. Um, that said, guys, I'm done marketing. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this review of The Flashman, and of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.